Going back to the forthcoming governorship elections in Anambra State, various stakeholders, either operating as individuals or groups, have been harping on the need for contending political parties to close ranks and ensure a peaceful exercise. That's right. That rallying call for peace has been central to the message of the governorship candidate of the African Democratic Congress, Akachuku Wapo, who now joins us via Zoom from Orca, the state capital. Welcome. It's good to have you with us. Now, earlier on in the program, we'd be talking about security issues and the levels of uh, progress made in uh, trying to enforce some kind of uh, peace in that regard. Now, let's talk about the party themselves. Your party, ADC, uh, could be termed a political lightweight in Anambra, realistically. So how have you made impact on the grassroots level? And do you think you stand a chance against uh, ABGA, APC, and the likes of uh, PDP as well? Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, the, 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 with regard to my party and the big parties in Anambra State, this election is a fight between the people and their oppressors. APC, APGA, PDP, they mishandled Anambra State for 20-something years, 20-something years. They left us with a handful of dust. So for me, ABC is a people's party. So what we've done is not to pretend that we have some large political structure that we have to use to combat these oppressors. What we've done is to study the Anambra society and understand the most important asset our forefathers had given us in the management of the public space called the Umunna system. So we have attached our message and the liberation desire of our people around an existing institution called the Umunna system. Now, so this system will rise to confront the people, these big parties that are reckless, lawless, and completely have huge disregard for the people of Anambra State. So it's not a party thing, it's a people versus their oppressors. Mr. Wangpo, you have described the elections as a fight between the people and their oppressors. And speaking of oppressors, there are different types in the state right now who might be threatening the democratic process. And I'm talking about the stay-at-home order and the insecurity as well. How confident are you that people will come out to vote, um, even those who you have said you have galvanized in the uh, grassroots? Well, you see, the sit-at-home is civil disobedience. It is a process that the people, young people, who across the past five, 10 years have been saying that they want their voice heard. We in this country witnessed that this organization had grown from being a pressure group to a process seeker to a referendum seeker and moments in the history, their members were cut down. Now, we experienced the Niger uh, Bridge event. We experienced the the ABBA issues, when this group were not engaging with the kind of strategy the people they are talking to are engaging with them. Well, they've now matured a system of civil disobedience. However, I am confident that the people behind this process are not a people that do not understand that at such tactical moment, they will not lose sight of the fact that it is easier for them to lose the control of their space if they do not allow a democratic process to exist. We'll continue, therefore, to push it forward and hope that our people, because once they see that our people have risen to the responsibility of controlling government so that the, what they are complaining about at home can be seen to be solved, they are children in the Omona system. There are young people who, are, who believe in our evilness. There are young people who understand that our umunna is the strongest participatory weapon of democracy that we have. They can't offer anything stronger than that. And when we rise with that, they will rise with us. I'm confident about that. Indeed, Mr. Mwaku. Now, there were issues regarding factions and polarizations uh, at the Congress elections lately, uh, not only in Anambra, but uh, several parts of the country as well, uh, with some main political parties. No. How do you hope to leverage on that to your advantage? Uh, and what message 
uh, is uh, conflicts like that sending to the electorate in terms of uniformity? Well, you know, uh, our political parties are taken over by big money lords. Uh, in our experience in Anambra State, that these rich men, they come into Anambra State, use their money, corrupt the population, you know, confuse the people, and then dump one fellow at us who runs our life like a runaway horse for four years. Now, they have finished decimating the society and they're decimating the instrument with which they are taking spaces. They are destroying their parties. They are breaking the laws. And um, we have, uh, I read from the Guardian of a voter, you know, one outstanding voter in Anambra say, who has gotten tired of this and has taken all of them to court. So I think that um, it's not an issue of exploiting their weakness. It's an issue of institutionalizing why they continue in their weakness. So I think that what we have to do is to continue to convince our people that these people who have disempowered you, who made you not to believe in the public space, who made you not to you know, have confidence in the laws of our land, they are at their weakest moment. It's time for you to get up, take the laws into, you know, back, back to yourselves and establish the community that you want. So well, it's not a party game for me. It is a game of getting our people to see that you are not as powerless as you think. Get up, organize against these guys. 22 years, they spent 6.5 trillion naira and left you with a handful of dust. Now they are in shambles. Their greed has overtaken them. Their recklessness has overtaken them. Their lawlessness has overtaken them. And there are lawyers, brilliant lawyers, helping you. Get up, guys. Let's take the space. Mr. Wangpo, you are running this year alongst with the incumbent and a few others. What do you bring to the table that is different from the rest of your fellow candidates? The most important thing I bring to the table is the control of governance. I come with 15 years of serving in public service, 15 years. I went from local government to state government, to regional government, to the presidency. Those 15 years, I stand up to say that it's 15 years of blameless service, 15 years of zero corruption, 15 years of doing the right thing, 15 years of controlling my own impulses so I become smaller, so that our community can grow bigger. 15 years of understanding that when you consume what belongs to everybody, you destroy yourself and them along. And so I say to them, what I bring is a willingness to submit this government to control, a willingness to let you take charge of your government, a, a willingness to let you hold the government account. So I promise one, an executive that will abide by rule of law. I promise an assembly that will be financially independent, a judiciary that will be financially independent, and then a civil service that will also be professional and autonomous. I promise them that we should do local government inst elections instantly. And that local government and all the elections will produce represent people who you can recall. So we can do a social contract, the basis of which we bring these people to authority and question them and bring them under control. What I bring is a willingness to let the rule of law stand. That's the greatest thing I bring. Once we do that, Anambra is awash with talents, genuses, gifts of all sorts. And these people are destroying the space for the genius of Anambra State to rise and walk. I bring the suppression of the environment so that the genius of Anambra State can rise. Indeed, interesting perspective. Mr. Mwapo uh, Akachuku, African Democratic Congress governorship candidate uh, for the elections in Anambra. Uh, would like to thank you very much for your uh, input on that. Thank you.